My Personal Leadership Philosophy, Part 1, Values and Priorities. What values do I think are most important in life and business? My biggest values are confidence and a carefree attitude. As I've mentioned many times, confidence allows you to be you and helps you reach your goals as you believe in yourself and everything you stand behind. A carefree attitude is important, and what I mean by this is that you don't care what others think of you. You don't care when people see you drive a certain car or wear certain clothes. You just care about your own picture and don't let anyone ruin it. What are my personal strengths and weaknesses when it comes to values and behaviors? So, my strengths are that if I truly love something, like the gym, for example, I will do whatever it takes to succeed at it. I won't stop in the face of failure and discouragement, and I'll keep fighting until I get why I want and succeed because I love it so much, and I'll be confident in my abilities. My weaknesses are that, though I have many friends, and I do like people, I like to be alone a lot, as I find peace by myself. However, I know that I have to interact with people more, as that is where happiness lies, and that's where connections is. connections are. What do I feel are the priorities of a leader? So priorities of a leader, to me, are to be confident, intelligent, and caring. Confidence shows that the leader is not afraid of barriers or problems in the way and is willing to do what is necessary in order to succeed. Intelligence shows that the leader knows what they're talking about and is aware of what they're doing. And the caring shows that they understand and feel people mentally and physically and trying and trying to allow them to be themselves to better themselves but also allow them to contribute to the bigger picture part one continued so three greatest moments of efficiency number one sophomore year soccer so sophomore year of high school my soccer team was one zero down from another team and at half time our coach told us that we weren't playing our game and he started to give us points as after this I pulled aside the team and I told them that the next half was going to be our fight back and that we had to put everything we had if we wanted to win. I told each player to play their game as I had played with them on countless occasions. We had a quick huddle and then the second half of the game began and we won 2-1 at the end of the game. My second moment of efficiency was a hectic week at UConn. So in my first semester of UConn, there was a week where I had two essays, two tests, a quiz and a presentation due that week. I was worried at first, but then I calmed down and relaxed and pulled out my journal and began to make a plan about how I was going to study and turn in each of my assignments and tests to make sure that I was doing them correct and efficiently. I did bit by bit each day and made sure that I had everything done so that I could check off my journal. I aced those assignments and papers. My third greatest moment of efficiency was balancing my life in high school. So in high school, I did track, and I had to balance track, I had to do soccer, I had to balance the gym, my social life, and schoolwork since I was a freshman. And though I didn't have a journal to keep track of my things, every day I kept a mental note of what had to be done when I, and when I had to do it to make sure that I had everything done. So my schedule was as followed. School, track, or soccer, gym, homework, and social life. This kind of organization allowed me to know when everything was going to happen and kind of kept my life together so I knew what I was doing instead of being all mixed up. So my three greatest failures. So number one was my 455 pound squat fail. And it happened over winter break and I was really confident about getting it but I failed and did not make it up. I didn't make it up with the weight and this frustrated me a lot because I want to be closer to my squatting goal of 500 pounds before 2021 or before I was 20 which was uh, December 20 which is December 25th so each failure to me is like a step further away from my goal but a lesson is learned every time I fail I knew that I had to do something to improve it so I started changing up my leg routine and helping that helped and finding new programs but I still haven't tried again so it's something I need to try soon my second failure was um, senior year of high school my soccer team made it to the second round of playoffs and we lost to a worse seeded team but our team had been very cocky, as we knew we were better than every other team in the state. But that meant that we had to we had to play like that, even though we thought even though we played bad, we had to 
even though we played bad at that game, we should have played as if we were the best team in the country, as it's the kind of mindset that you want instead of thinking that we were the best, instead of thinking of like a very cocky mindset where we would undermine and under think every other team that we played. And though we had been beaten by other teams in the season, we still won a f- we still won most of our games. But it taught me to stay strong even when we lost and even when we expected the worst from really good teams. It taught it taught, it taught me at least to never undermine or underestimate anyone because you never know how the other team or this other person is going to act once you are against them. So it's just always just do your best because you don't know what to expect. And my last failure was my junior year track meet. So I was running a 400 meter and there were six lanes, three for Farmington where I went and three for other school. And it was the last stretch of the 100 meters and I was second and my teammate wasn't first. But I turned around to see how far away I was from everyone, which is something you should never do in a track race, but I did. And someone on the other team was just catching me and eventually beat me in second place. And I learned to always put 100 into everything you like to do and not be scared of competitors as it will get you beat, as I did in my case. So, lastly, my three greatest moments of inefficiency. Number one, my unmotivated week at UConn. So, there was a week where I was so tired and not motivated to do my homework that I procrastinated the entire week until Sunday. When everything was due at 11.59 p.m. And I was panicking. I was worried. But I decided to just relax. And just do everything as quickly as I could. As best as I could. And turn it in. With not much time left. And I learned from that. To stay on top of my things. Especially in college. So my things don't overcrowd me. And so I have everything organized. My second moment of inefficiency. Was my senior year of high school. My mom asked me to do a scholarship form, which she had found, and said that I should do it. So I would put it off every week until she asked me, and until it was the last day where it was due. That day I had, I pushed all my other things aside, like the things I wanted to do, like hang out with my friends and go to the gym to do that form, because I had procrastinated it until the last minute. And my mom helped me out with that, and we finished it before the day was over. But if I had done it in the very beginning, like she had asked me to, I would have not had to stress about it, and I, would, I wouldn't have to push off all my plans for that day. Lastly, my last greatest moment of inefficiency, during my sophomore year of summer vacation, so sophomore year to junior year, I did nothing every day in the summer. I would wake up late, I would do nothing, then go back to sleep very late. For six weeks, I would, I would do nothing. And I could have been, I could have been finding things like to make money or learning a new skill, or doing something not in the house. But I wasted those weeks being lazy, and now I hate to do nothing and just want to do something every minute of the day so I don't waste time. And though there are still some occasions that I'm tired, and I just want to fall my bed and just sleep. I a lot of the times I just get up and just try to do something because I hate wasting time in the day. Part two, desirable outcomes I want to achieve. So my goals are as follows. I want to be an entrepreneur and run my own business as I've always known I could from a young age. I also want to be a professional bodybuilder as it's something I've always wanted to do ever since I started working out. So using SMART goals, I've come up with the following. Specific, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a professional bodybuilder. Measurable. At my time at UConn, I want to enter bodybuilding shows. I also, also at UConn, I want to come up with ideas for businesses and slowly start one off. Achievable. I know I can become a professional bodybuilder because of my own confidence and knowing how to work out. I also know I can become an entrepreneur and become a leader as I know I have the capabilities of one. I just do not know what type of business yet. Relevant. I love sports and bodybuilding, and I'm a sports management major, so so being a professional bodybuilder who's an entrepreneur in a sports field would make sense to my life and things I love. Time bound. I want to be a professional bodybuilder by the time I graduate from UConn. I want to be an entrepreneur by the time I'm 30 years old. 
part three, my leadership philosophy. It's broken down into theory, attitude, principles, and behavior. Theory. I believe in working collectively in order to solve problems, but make sure that everyone is heard. Attitude. My thoughts will be meaningful and my words will guide my actions to make sure I back up what I say. Principles. I will lead with confidence and diligence to make sure that I am successful in my task. Behavior. I expect to be calm and think carefully in situations. These are my leadership philosophies, as I believe it's what makes a good leader and what I expect of myself in order to become successful. Part 4. Evaluating my leadership philosophy. So for this, I wrote a statement of success, something that I want to abide by. I, Joshua Chikon Cardoso Niel, am aware of what I have written above and stand by it. I have written my name in full so that I am responsible for what I have written and the goals I have set. I understand that what I have written reflects me as an individual. I am confident in my actions and behaviors that I will become a professional bodybuilder by the time I graduate from Yukon and that I will become an entrepreneur by the time I am 30 years old. Thank you for listening and watching.